Good morning. Welcome to the IPW Bible Study. IPW stands for Incredible Phenomenal Women because that's who we are. Praise God. We want to go ahead and get started this morning and want to ask you to go ahead and share it with a friend. Call somebody and tell them, say, the Incredible Phenomenal Women are on, online today. Okay? All right. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God, we praise you, Lord. We honor you, God. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you, God, that this is the day that you have made, God. So, Lord, let us rejoice and be glad in it, God. Father, we give you praise and adoration, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you for your awesomeness and your mightiness, Lord God. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus, oh God. And, Father, we just welcome you, Father. We welcome you in this Bible study this morning. We ask, God, that you would have your way, Lord God. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit, God. So Lord, move, God, hallelujah, as only you can move, God. Move upon your people right now, God. Touch our ears to hear and hearts to receive and minds to understand what you're saying to us this morning, individually, Lord God, and collectively, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. So Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for all that you're doing in this Bible study, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name continue Lord God hallelujah oh God to bless your people God in every area of life God in the name of Jesus we thank you and we praise you and we give you all the honor and all the glory God have your way God move by your spirit God in the name of Jesus we thank you God in Jesus name we pray amen amen and amen praise God hallelujah praise the Lord God is so good he's so wonderful Hallelujah. What would I do without the Lord on my side? I couldn't make it. Hallelujah, Jesus. The lesson this morning we're going to be talking about is what is the difference between faith and hope? What is the difference between faith and hope? I'm going to try to take my time on this. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to you in the answer. Faith and hope are distinct yet related that there is a difference between faith, that there is a difference between faith and hope is evident in 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. So 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Praise God. I want to read that from the Amplified Version, 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. It said, and now there remain faith, abide in trust in God and hope, confident expectation of eternal salvation. Praise God, hallelujah. Love, unselfish love for others, growing out of God's love for me. These three, the choices, graces, but the greatest of these is love. So faith is abiding trust in God and hope is confident and expectation of eternal salvation. Praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now these three remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Two of these Two of the three greatest gifts are faith and hope, but they're listed separately. That faith and hope are related concepts is seen in Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is confidence in what we hope for. And I looked up the word confidence and it says full trust and belief. So faith, and hope are related concepts. The King James Version say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, e Hebrews 11 and 1, for the evidence of things not seen. The easy read says, faith is what makes real the things we hope for. It is proof of what we cannot see. Now we're talking about faith and we're talking about hope because they work together. You cannot have hope without faith, and you can't have faith without hope. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Faith is a complete trust or confidence in something or someone. Faith involves intellectual assent to set of uh, assent to a set of facts and trust in those facts. For example, we have faith in Jesus Christ. This means we completely trust Jesus for our eternal destiny. We trust Jesus for everything in our lives we trust him with. That's why the scripture, I think it's Proverbs 3 and 5, say, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So we, we talk, we're talking about faith and hope this morning. And you know, when I, was, when I was thinking about this lesson, the Lord brought it back to, um, brought back to my remembrance, some things in my own life that I was uh, believing God for and I was hoping for. Because sometimes the way it works is that we be hoping for things. We hope for it, but we have to wait on God to bring it into fruition. We have faith. Faith, the Bible said faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the substance of things hoped for. Even though we may not see it, we know that faith is the substance of it. Thank you, Jesus. Biblical hope is built on faith. Hope is the earnest anticipation that comes with believing something good. Hope is a confident expectation that naturally stems from faith. It naturally stems from faith. Hope is a peaceful assurance that something that hasn't happened yet will indeed happen. Hope must be involved. Hope must involve something that is as yet unseen. Hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for something? Who hopes for what they already have? Let's go to Romans 8 and 24 in the, in, in the easy reversion. Romans 8 and 24 says, we were saved to have this hope. If we can see what we are waiting for, that is not really hope. People don't hope for something they already have. You know, I, I think about the Lord brought it back to my remembrance when we were uh, stationed at Fort Stewart. A lot of y'all hear me talk about Fort Stewart a lot because Fort Stewart was a foundation uh, for, for me. And God did a lot of things in my life. A lot of things happened in my life when I was at Fort Stewart. But anyway, when we was at Fort Stewart, um, I didn't graduate high school. So the Lord laid it on my heart to go back and get my GED. So I said, okay, Lord, I'm gonna go back and get my GED. And I prayed and uh, I was like, okay, God, I was hoping that I pass because that's a lot of uh, information that they bog on you, you know, like within a, a six month, I mean, six week period. And I was like, okay, Lord, I need your help on this. I hope I pass, Lord, but I trust you, God. So anyway, I did pass. I passed the test and the Lord told me to go and apply for a job in the banking system. So at first I went to the banks and um, went to one of the banks um, in Hinesville and applied for a job, but they never did. They never did call me, you know, they didn't call me for an interview or anything. So, and I was, I, I got a little discouraged and I was like, okay, God, cause I was hoping, you know, I, I felt like that's what the Lord wanted me to do. And I was hoping that I would get that interview, but they never called me. So, uh, I went back and I, I, I sought the Lord again. And, and the Lord told me, he said, go to the credit union. See, people don't realize that there is a difference between a credit union and a bank. Credit unions are, are funded by members. If they don't have what they call members, people coming in, opening up accounts and doing different things, then they can't function. Um, banks are governed by and funded by the government. So that's why when you go to a bank, they, they call you a customer. 
because that's what you are, a customer. But when you go to the credit union, you are a member. What you, what, you matter in the credit union. You matter because you sort of have like a little, little stock, so to speak, <laughs> in the credit union, because they know they can't function without you. But anyway, I went to the credit union and um, I applied for a job and fill out the application, took it back, and, um, and then I was saying, okay, God, hopefully they'll call me because the other bank didn't call me. But you know, I said, okay, God, I said, Lord, if you get me in there, then I'll get the job. I, was, I had that hope that God was gonna get me in there and I had that faith that I was gonna get that job. So anyway, what happened was, they told me, they said, okay, uh, Ms. Jones, uh, she's gonna give you a call on this day, at this time. So I waited on that day at that time and nothing happened. So if they told me they was gonna call me at two o'clock, if I didn't hear from them by two, two o'clock, at three o'clock, I was calling them. So I called them and they said, well, she just got uh, held up or whatever, whatever. And I said, okay, and they said, she's gonna give you a call back. And they gave me another day that she was supposed to call me. Okay, she didn't call me <laughs> when she said so. I gave them the time again and I called back. And still believe in God, still got that hope that the Lord gonna get me in there. So, so, I, they, they, they didn't, they didn't um, when I went back and I called back, and then she said, well, okay, they go, she's gonna call you, Miss Jones. They, by then, they knew my name, okay? And so, they didn't call me, that was on a, uh, on a Friday. They didn't call me that, you know, that week, the whole week, they didn't call me. On uh, one Saturday, they asked me, say, can you, no. They called me during the weekday and asked me, could you come in for an interview? And I said, okay, I'll come in for the interview. I went in for the interview and the lady that I had to see, she sat down, she talked to me, asked me questions. And I was just excited because I said, Lord, if you get me in there, I had the hope. God, you get me in there. I got the faith to believe that I'm gonna get this job, Lord. So when they got me in there uh, and she was talking to me and stuff, and when the interview was over, she said, well, Ms. Jones, she said, we'll get back with you and let you know because we have two other people that, um, you know, that we're going to have to interview and we'll, we'll get back with you. And I said, well, I look forward to hearing from you. I said, because God already told me that the job is mine. And they looked at me. They said, well, <laughs> they sort of did a little smirk laugh. They said, okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get back with you. I said, well, I look forward to hearing from you. So then what happened was, I didn't hear from them right away. So do you know that the next time I heard from them about the job, I was praising God all along, because I was like, Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you that this job is mine, God. And they, they, they called me, they called me on a Saturday. They called me on a Saturday and they said, Miss Jones, uh, do you mind, can you, can you report to work on Monday morning? I said, yes, yes, I can be there. I'll be there bright and early. And when I got to that job, hallelujah, it wasn't nobody but God that gave me that job. And I told them people, I said, you know what? When they was training me on the teller line, I said, I'm gonna be the best teller you ever trained. And guess what? After one year, God blessed me in one year, I was doing member services. I was opening up accounts, doing IRAs, after one year on that teller line. And then a year later, I was weekend operations manager. Nobody but God, because I trusted God. And every day I went in there, I prayed and I believed God. And I had the hope and the faith that God was gonna give me what I needed to keep that job and to do it in excellence. And every time I went in there, I told him, I do this as unto God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Nobody but God. And you know what? When I went to, I'm just going to share a little bit of testimony with you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because God has been so good to me. He's been good to me. Another time when I had to apply for a job, we was at Fort Jackson and I was going for Fort Jackson Credit Union. And yet I had all the qualifications, uh, but when they hired me, I went in on a pre-job program. And when I went in, 
under, on an under temp service. That's what it was, a temp service. And when I went in and they told me, they said, well, uh, I asked him, I said, because I really wanted to do memory service. You know, I had hoped that God would open up a door for me to do memory service. And they said, well, uh, Ms. Jones, we don't have a memory service position available, so we're going to have to start you out on a teleline. Because when you go into credit unions, banks, the interest level position is where they always try to start you at. Because when you start on that teleline, that teleline is going to train you, teach you a lot of stuff about the business. So anyway, I was like, Lord, I was talking to the God, I said, Lord, I said, Lord, I don't want to start on no teleline, Lord. I want to do member service. And they trained me two days on the teleline. The third day, let me show you how God uh, bless you. The third day, oh, when they was trying to train me, this one of the ladies at member service, had, they had did her evaluation. She did not like the, the evaluation that they gave her. And guess what she did? She quit. She quit right there on the spot and said, I will not be coming back. And I was like, oh, Jesus. And guess what? They said, well, Miss Jones, guess what? Since you already trained for member service, we're going to put you in this slot. Do you hear me? Nobody but God. God will open up a position or he'll move somebody out of a position to put you in it. Hallelujah, Jesus. But we got to have that hope and that faith that God, even though we may not see it right then, we got to trust God that he's going to move on our behalf. And that's what God did for me. And after a while, they said, I had people come to me and they said, how did you get that job? They said, because usually when they hire people from the outside, they, 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 they start them off on the teleline and only the people on the inside, they rotate them to those other positions. And I told them, I said, God gave it to me. And they was like, what? I said, yeah, baby. I said, the Lord gave me this job, honey. And see, the thing about it is that God said, the blessings of the Lord make it rich. And he don't add no sorrow to it. And you know, after I told them that, they left it alone. Praise God. But I knew that it was God that opened up the door for me. Because I kept hoping, I kept praying, I kept believing, I kept trusting that God was going to move on my behalf. And I kept speaking the word. Then I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, God. Praise God. That's the kind of God we serve. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hope that is seen is no hope at all. See, I didn't see it right away. I didn't see it. But I had faith. And I had hope that God was going to open up the door. And guess what he did? He opened up the door for me. Thank you, Jesus. Who hopes for what they already have? Thank you. Jesus' return, Jesus' return is our blessed hope. His return is our blessed hope. And you'll find that two, in Titus 2 and 13. We can't, we can't see him, but we know he's coming. And we anticipate that event with joy. Even though we have not seen him physically, we were not there for the resurrection. We were not there for the death. We was not there for the birth, the death, or the resurrection. But we believe what God said in his word. We believe that he is coming back. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wonderful Savior. He's coming back. Hallelujah. And we anticipate that. We look forward to him coming back. Hallelujah. We look forward that after we have left this earthen vessel, that we're going to be, he said, to be absent from the body is to be present with God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said he's coming again. Hallelujah. Let's go to John 14 and 3. John 14 and 3. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. John 14 and 3. And it reads, And if I go and prepare a place for you, wait a minute, I want to start up a little further. Thank you, Jesus. He said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, 
I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. I go to prepare a place for you. That if, if I, let me, let me hold up a second. Let me go back. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. So that where I am, you'll be there too. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. Hallelujah. He said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm coming back. I'm coming back again. Thank you, Jesus. And even though we have not seen Jesus, we, ne we have not seen, hallelujah, him in the physical form. We know that he lives because of what his words say. Hallelujah. Because of his spirit, his Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. We know he's real. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. By faith, we trust Jesus' words. And that leads to hope that we will one day be with him forever. Thank you, God. Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name. The first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Jesus was resurrected from the dead. The first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. And you find that in 1 Corinthians 15 and 20. We're going to go there. 1 Corinthians. Mm, thank you, God. 15 and 20. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15 and 20 says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that sleep. Thank you, Lord. 21 says, For since by one man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So Jesus, because he rose from the dead, because he resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah, Jesus. We don't have to stay in the grave. Thank you, God. Glory to your name, Jesus. We have that hope. We have that faith, that confidence. Hallelujah. We stand on his word, what his word say. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. That when we leave this earthen vessel, that we're going to be present with the Lord. That is the basis of our faith. Then we have Jesus' promise, because I live, you will live. John 14 and 19. That is the basis of our hope. We have that hope that because he lived, we shall live also. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Mm. The relationship between faith and hope can be illustrated in the joy of a child feels when he, the jo let me go back. The relationship between faith and hope can be illustrated in the joy of a child feels when his father tells him they're going to Disney's theme park tomorrow. We're going to Disney tomorrow. The child believes that he will go based on his father's word. That is faith. Mm, thank you, Jesus. We believe that we're going to be with the Father based on his word. We believe that we are healed, that we are delivered, that we are set free based on his word. Hallelujah, Jesus. We believe that no weapon formed against us shall prosper based on his word word. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. We believe that God gonna do what he said he gonna do based on his word. Thank you, Jesus. The child believes that he would go based on his father's word. That is faith. At the same time, 
That belief within the child kindles an irrepressible joy. That is hope. You know, I remember when I was, when I was, you know, young and I used to, when somebody tell me, they say, uh, we're going to do this tomorrow. I would get so excited because I was, I, I was looking forward to it. That was my hope. I was like, okay, guess what? Tomorrow, ooh, because they said it, I'm going to do, we're going to be able to do this tomorrow. And you get excited. The child's natural trust in his father promise is the faith. The child's squeals of delight and jumping in place are the expressions of the hope. He got excited. He was like, ooh, ooh, my daddy taking me to Disney tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Even though he didn't see it right there, he didn't have the manifestation, he had the hope. And because he believed, he knew the manifestation was coming. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. Faith and hope are complementary. Faith is grounded in the reality of the past. Hope is looking to the reality of the future. Let me say that again. Faith is grounded in the reality of the past. Hope is looking to the reality of the future. You think about things that God has did for you in the past. Hallelujah. It gives you hope for your future. And you know that God, if God did it for you back then, surely he can do it for you now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. You know when I look back and see the things that God has done for me and how God kept me and how God blessed me and how God opened up doors for me. I know that that's the same God that was back then is the same God today because God said he changed not. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah, Jesus. So if he did it for you then, surely he can do it for you now. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Christ Christians are people of faith and hope. We have the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of a time. And you can find that in Titus 1 and 2. Now, when I was thinking about this lesson, I, the Lord brought to my remembrance about David. When David was able, and you can find that in uh, 1 Samuel 17, and you can read 34 through 37. Okay, let's go there. We're going to go to 1 Samuel, because I want to read it to you. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Samuel 17 and 34. We're going to read 34 through 37. Thank you, God. And it says... And David said unto Saul, because up to this point, they, they was like, David, you know, how you, you, you just a little, little boy. You know, you, you can't go up against this, this giant. And this is David. And David said to Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he would deliver me out of the hand of, the Phil of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. So we know what God did for us before. That's what David's saying. David said, look, this is what God did for me in the past. 
God did this. The Lord gave me the strength. God used me to kill the bear, to kill the, kill the lion. He said, now if God can do that, hallelujah, this right here, this ain't nothing. Because the God I serve is almighty God. And nothing is too hard for him. Hallelujah, Jesus. When we look back where God brought us from, hallelujah, glory to your name, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. That gives us the strength and gives us, hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, God. It gives us the peace that God is with us. Faith is grounded in the reality of the past. Faith is grounded in the reality of the past. What God did in the past, hallelujah, strengthens your faith. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hope is looking for the reality of the future. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. David had the faith because of what God had did in his life. Hallelujah, Jesus. And it gave him hope. That even though he didn't see that he had killed the Philistine, he knew that the God that he served, hallelujah, glory to your name, would, would, would give him the power, the strength that he needed to tear down this, this Philistine. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Our faith in God is not because of a hope in the future, but because of a concrete experience in the past. Something that you saw God do in the past. We can't forget what God has done in the past for us. We have to remember, hallelujah, that the same God back then is the same God right now. And sometimes when we get discouraged, we need to reach back and look and see Hallelujah, what God has already done. And hallelujah. And sometimes we have to encourage ourselves and say, God, you did it back then. Guess what? I know you can do it right now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Our faith in God is not because of a hope in the future, but because of a concrete experience in the past. When I look back on my life and see the things that God has delivered me from, the things that God had protected me from, the doors that God has opened up for me, and the prayers that God has answered for me, how can I not have faith in him? How can I, how can I not hope in him? Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. How can I not walk by faith? and not by sight. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord God. Faith looks back at the faithfulness of God and demonstrate it in our allegiance to him. That's what faith does. It looks back at the faithfulness of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hope is based upon our faith so that we can enter into the future confidently, knowing that God would be faithful to us. Thank you, God. Hope is based upon our faith so that we can enter into the future confidently knowing that God will be faithful to us. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Faith is believing and knowing the outcome. Hope is waiting for the outcome to manifest. Thank you, Jesus. Faith is believing and knowing the outcome. We know that God is going to move. We know that what we ask of God, hallelujah, Jesus, glory to your name, Lord God. Hope is waiting for the outcome to manifest. We have that hope. We have that assurance that God is going to do what God said he is going to do. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. He don't change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we have to know that faith and hope works together. You can't have one without the other. Hallelujah. If you've got faith and you believe in God for something, you got to have that hope. Even though you don't see it, hallelujah, you have the faith to believe that God is going to manifest it. 
Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. God is so wonderful. He's so awesome. And just think about what he's done in your life. Glory to your name, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Where would we be if it had not been for the Lord on our side? Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you and we praise you, we honor you and we reverence you, God. Lord, we just thank you for your word this morning, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that you've changed not, but you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever, God. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord, that we have hope in you. We have faith in you, Lord, God. Hallelujah. And that we can walk by faith and not by sight, Lord, God. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. That we can look beyond our situation and our circumstances, Lord, God, and have that hope, Lord, God, that you're going to do, Lord, God, what you said that you're going to do, and that you're going to bring forth Deliver us, Lord God. Hallelujah. That you're going to meet us where we are, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh, God, just continue to have your way in our lives. Continue to bless us and keep us, lead us and guide us. We thank you for your word this morning, God. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our Bible study this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name. Don't forget to share it. And we'll see you next time in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Hi, I know your life was blessed by the word that was taught on today. And I know it will continue to bless you throughout your week. So again, be prepared to come be with us again next week as we bring the word of the Lord. As we help you to become the incredible and phenomenal woman that God has created you to be. Have a good day and we'll see you next week.